Hi, this is Zanya Winans. We are coming to you with the Marketing X Files on the Best Practices Show with Kirk Barron. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And we've got an incredible segment that we're starting today that you're absolutely going to love. It's the Marketing X Files with our good friend Zanya Wine from Golden Proportions, Episode One. You do not want to miss this because while everybody's talking about social proof, a lot of people don't know how to do it. And today we're going to talk about how you can leverage social proof and take shoppers and turn them into callers and eventually patients, customers, all that kind of stuff. You do not want to miss this. So do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. You're going to love this. Also, keep in mind, as we do with all these, we are shooting this live on Facebook. So as you have questions, if you have questions, add them to the feed and I'll ask, ask Zanya directly and we'll get the answers straight from her while she's on the show. Or later on, if you're watching them, continue to add questions to the feed and we'll get back to you because we want you to get the most out of this. When you're watching these too, keep sending us suggestions like a lot of you are on things that you want to see. And we're doing our best to line all of these shows up, not only with Zanya, but with other guests. So keep sending them to us. Now, again, over 39,000 followers on Facebook, only, almost at 40,000. I can't thank you enough. And then over 150,000 of you have visited us on iTunes. So again, all I can say is thank you. Now, my guest today has been a trusted friend, colleague, advisor, coach, mentor. I mean, I could go on forever. She's the one that I call when I panic or on marketing or anything. She's just been a great friend and advisor to all of us in the ACT community and our clients and coaches. Uh, and she runs a great company called Golden Proportions. So, Zanya, I know who you are. A lot of our viewers know who you are. But if somebody's watching this, give us a little bit of your story and they don't know who Zanya is. Okay. So, my story is 25 years ago, I had the very good fortune to marry a dentist. So, I have lived this journey that all of our listeners and viewers have. And about 18 years ago, I founded an agency, Golden Proportions Marketing, because I really wanted to help dentists find the right kind of patients for their practice. And this was kind of at the advent of when marketing was acceptable and we were going beyond yellow pages. So I have seen this journey that doctors have been on and I wanted to share all the cool information that we've learned over the past 18 years. Yeah. And when you get this stuff, like marketing is actually pretty predictable. It's not like it was in the old days where we just threw a lot of money and things. Now there's more metrics. There's a lot more learning, you know, social media and social proof has changed the game completely because now it's not word of mouth. It's word of thumb. So this is a game that dentists have to be in front of. And I want you to talk about the important, why is this social proof so important in dentistry? So, one of the cool things about marketing is um, doctors get really focused on lead generation and they kind of forget the other half of the equation, which is turning those leads into appointments. It's one thing to get people to go to your website, to visit your Facebook page, but if they don't ultimately pick up the phone, it's wasted effort. And social proof is one of those things that's going to get people to pick up the phone. Mm. So social proof, I think most doctors kind of have this vision of social proof as reviews. I mean, we're all used to seeing reviews on Google and on Facebook, but there are so many more things that you can do with it if you really understand what the intent is and what we're trying to accomplish with it. Right, right. So first of all, define social proof, because even I have my own definition. Give us some perspective on what social proof is. Okay. So social proof is actually something that goes back to psychology. It is a psychological and social phenomenon where basically people assume the actions of other people around them in order to conform to social norms because nobody wants to be the nonconformist, or at least very few people want to be the nonconformist. We all want to fit in. It is literally the adult version of peer pressure that we see in high school. 
See, that's not fair. And I see this happen in fashion. Like kids are doing things fat. I'm like, that is so odd. And then all of a sudden it picks up a critical mass and then you see photos of it everywhere. And now our kids are starting to wear sneakers that look like the sneakers we wore like 30 years ago. It's very interesting how social, you know, social proof and pressures conform our behaviors. They really do. There's there's some really cool examples back in psychology, like before we talk about how to apply this in your practice, if you think about it, there was um, a great video I was just watching before we came on where they did a social experiment where there were people walking out in an outdoor shopping mall and a couple of them just stopped and started looking up at the sky for no particular reason. And they were videotaping this as everyone's milling around them. And within a couple of seconds, other people stopped started looking up at the sky and then more people see them doing it. And even though there was literally nothing to look at, we all want to make sure we're not missing out on something. That's a great example of social proof. There's just this assumption that if someone else is doing it, it's got to be worthwhile and valuable. Yeah. So how do we take this thing that we sub-label peer pressure and make it a positive <laughs> in a dental practice? Okay. So what social proof does for you that's really awesome is it makes you likable. Um, it takes all of the great personality aspects of your practice and kind of puts them in this neat little box that says, here is why you want to go to this practice. So it gives you likability. Um, it also takes the pressure out of making a decision away from people. So if you think about it, dentistry um, is not something that we all know a whole lot about. It's, it's really kind of complicated. It's very science oriented and it's medical. And yeah, we know it's about teeth, but we don't know how it gets done. And we have to trust that someone else is gonna be able to do this correctly. So when you use social proof, you're actually kind of taking away the fear of something that is complicated and that you don't understand. And you're putting your faith in somebody else to make this decision for you so that you don't carry the burden of, did I make the right decision? Right. Now let's, let's give everybody like the low hanging fruit example. And everybody does this. I think as when you order from Amazon, you look through the customer reviews and you already know inherently this thing's got problems. If it's 3.1 or 2.7, because you're going to see all this stuff. So I put it on all the people that have put stars here. You guys better be not lying to me. And I try, I often trust them more than the actual, you know, manufacturer themselves because the manufacturer's got beautiful, you know, photos and descriptions, but the people underneath give me the truth. Is that, is that what we're talking about? Exactly what we're talking about, but that's just one way to use it. You can use social proof in your marketing in so many different ways. So, I mean, let's start with that obvious one, the reviews. Um, something that's really important when you're doing the reviews is that they are personal and authentic. So it's actually far better as much as I love all the review services that are out there. They're completely automated. It's just this generic request that goes out and there's nothing that's going to encourage a patient to take that next step and really talk about their personal experience with the doctor. So getting the doctor and the team to take a hot second and just talk to the patient and explain so many people don't truly know what we do or how we take care of people. I would love it if you could write a short review for us and just let people know what to experience when they come to see us. That seems obvious, right? Mm -hmm. So here's where we want to take it a step further. All of those review services, they kind of cultivate all of your reviews into this newsfeed. And a lot of people put them on their website. I've got it on my website. Um, but all it is, is a list of how many stars and the things that they've said. If you want to really kick up your social proof, you need a way to put a photograph of the person who left you the review, because now it's just not this generic person behind a wall. But if you can put an actual photo next to the individual, it makes that social proof 10 times more sticky. Now, my first question is where can, you can't do that in Google, right? No, you can't do that in Google. You can't do that in Facebook. That is why it's kind of a really good idea to take that social proof a step further on your website or on your social media and literally create a page where you have captured some of your best reviews. And then you can feature um, a photograph of that patient 
video testimonials, you and I have talked about these. There is nothing more powerful than video testimonials because it is that person in their words saying why this is the best experience in the world. Yeah. Now, here's a really cool thing that you can do. When we think of reviews, what would you want somebody to leave for you in a review? What would you want them to say? Emotionally, like impactful information, not like this was a good service, they were kind. You want them to use like, I don't know, descriptive words that are clearly exceeding expectations. Can I say that? Yeah, absolutely. But we kind of expect that from reviews. So if you really want people to convert, we know when someone comes to a website or they're in that shopper experience, they've immediately got some objections in their mind. Yes. It's a pain point that they're struggling with. It could be the cost of your service. It could be if you participate in their insurance. Um, it could be the hours of your practice or what services you offer. If you can get a review from a patient, this is where you can like literally personally interview them and get them to address that exact objection right in their testimonial, you are now giving credibility and social proof. It's not just you saying why you want to overcome the price point, but someone else is saying it for you. That's so true because when you go somewhere there, you're like, oh my gosh, this is that's me. I am that person and I have that same question. So would you do that through really well-designed questions? Like, I would. Actually, yeah, you're going to want to script a number of really good questions, figure out what your patient's pain points are, which probably are mostly the ones I just listed, um, and then ask some questions of that patient where they're specifically answering that. Now, you can write up the patient's testimonial for them so that it's fluid and it's not just conversational like we are now and get them to approve it, but come right out. Use the headline of the testimonial to say, the price was 1000% worth it mm. or something along those lines where you can kind of capture the sentiment of what someone's pain point is. Go That's, right to part of it. Don't dance around the problem. Meet it head on. That is awesome. So if you were, if you were talking to a dentist that would be watching this right now, just say, Hey, look, bottom line is you're going to want to collect testimonial videos and then purposely ask them the right questions, reverse engineer that, Take the text, put it on a page on your website that proactively answers the pain points of somebody visiting. So I'm just trying to summarize because I'm going to, this is good stuff. <laughs> well, another way to do this is um, actually have a frequently asked questions page on your website. That's another way to kind of tackle those objections that people are going to have. And those frequently asked questions can be answered by your patients with their testimonials, with how they got around that same problem that the rest of your patients or prospective patients are going to have. You're going to convert a lot faster if you have answered their questions before they even have a chance to ask them. Love it. Absolutely love it. And so um, getting more reviews, not through the automated service, give us some perspective on that one. Like how would I go about that if I'm a dentist and I'm working on teeth all day and my team members say, I'm so busy. I don't know how I'm going to do that without the automated service. So the automated service, I don't want to diss that. That's frankly, it's incredibly important because you need it for your SEO. You need it for your website to rank. It's Don't ever give up on those. But a great way to orchestrate this is like a one-day event. Um, tie it into a photo shoot. Tie it into the video shoot. And you take each patient aside and ask them these questions. Or, you know, you can kind of handpick particular patients that you know had this situation that you want to address that objection for somebody and make sure they're the ones you're inviting in. But if you do it all in one day, you can bang out, honestly, 10 to 15 patients really easily, but you don't need to keep those testimonials as updated as you would the ones for Google. These are going to be good for a little while because most people only come to your website when they are looking for a dentist. They are not going back again and again and again. So these aren't going to be dated. You can kind of do this once a year, once every other year, and it's going to give you more than enough of what you need. Absolutely. You could you can schedule the patient stack. He picks the, the right ones and just create it a, a, as a regular cadence every so often to do this. Great idea. Great Excellent. idea. So How while you're while you're at it, here's another way you can go about it. Storytelling. Literally take one patient and their experience and tell their entire story top to bottom. 
let it be in the patient's words. Um, and, and this doesn't just have to be a video testimonial. This can be great editorial to put on your website or in a blog that you share with somebody. Um, and you can show case photos as you go along of what the experience was like step by step. You could kind of document exactly what they're feeling at that point in time, um, you know, how much they enjoy interacting with your team. And believe it or not, everybody believes that no one reads anything on the internet, which I agree, we're skimmers. But there have been great studies in marketing that shows the difference between short form copy, which is just, you know, a couple of sentences and really long form copy. We have all gotten those letters in the mail that are like three pages long typewritten and you're wondering why on earth somebody bothers to send that because they are incredibly effective. If you can suck someone into someone's personal story, they want to know how it ends. They're yeah. going to go all the way to the bottom and that engagement Think about that for your website, how much time they're going to spend on your site. Now they're a part of your experience and they're going to want to keep going. Right. The first thought you had is look at all the investment that somebody went into this. And um, I've heard that the research on long copy greatly trumps short copy. And if anyone doubts this, just go to the Apple website. Like I was looking at a MacBook, new MacBook Pro. It went on forever, like the long forms that they use in one of the best brands, what most well-known brands in the world for one product. It goes for pages and pages and pages on all the benefits, features, why you have to have the new one. And the new iPhone, never mind, I'll just stop right there because I know what you're saying is true. All right, so here's another take on it. Celebrity social proof. There is a reason the Kardashians get paid millions upon millions of dollars to hawk somebody else's product. Because you want to be like them? Is no, that I don't. I sure. <laughs> or no, no, no. People want to be like them. They, they want to be like them. But it's, it's not even that you want to be like them. It's that there is an associated assumption. This per person is like really high level and really important. Therefore, what they say carries more weight. Which is why if you have anything even close to a celebrity in your practice, which I'm not talking, you do not have to have a, a genuine A-lister. It can be a local celebrity. So it could be your really well-known mayor in town. Or I know a couple of practices we've worked with where um, radio DJs are one of their patients. And the radio DJs, they have celebrity followings, even though they're just normal people, and there's that much more credibility by them selling your story for you. That is awesome. So give me some perspective. So the patient's in for hygiene. They're a well-known official in the area. Would you go, hey, let's take a selfie? I mean, obviously, <laughs> the first thing every dentist is, what about HIPAA? And then I need the photo form. Do I need the HIPAA photo form and everything else before I actually take the photo? Like, give me some, some easy perspective on how I leverage celebrity in a dental office. Um, so I know a lot of practices that have actually done a trade and it makes it a little less financially ouchy to everybody because those celebrities are in there because they need work. And because they're celebrities, they're going to be a whole lot more visible and they're going to care about what's going on here. So you can broach the idea of, you know, you've got a great audience and you and I have talked about this restorative plan that you want to do. By the way, I can promise these local celebrities, they are not made of money. They are probably making less than you and I are by a good stretch. So they are going to be interested in some sort of trade. Mm -hmm. um, and you can really leverage this. If you negotiate the contract with them, right, and it's just a person-to-person -person contract, they have a huge social media following. So you can get them to share their story on their social media channels, in addition to broadcasting it live, doing uh, on location, you know, radio spots. There's, there's any number of ways to do it, but it needs to come from them, not just you saying so-and-so endorses us. It needs that to come from the horse's mouth. That's what the key is. So if you're going to engage in this verbal contract, you're going to have to get them to say, yes, I will put this out on mine or they'll share what you posted on their feed. Would that be the same thing? Uh, yeah, except I wouldn't do a verbal contract. I get it in writing. These things need to be negotiated and locked down because I've also seen people try and wiggle out of them. Right. Yeah. Because you know how that is. If you do $26,000 of the dentistry and they don't, you're like, oh, no, I want to eat a chair. And now you're just angry at the celebrity. So. Exactly. 
but they can be incredible. I mean, that is social proof at one of its highest level forms. Um, so great way to take advantage of that. Not everybody's going to have that in their office. Yeah, that's so, um, other things. Oh, expert, expert status. So wait, explain that. What's expert status? So Kirk, you lecture a lot. And I know that you've had any number of really important people, um, like I think it might've been Dawson or Spear personally gave you a quote that said, Kirk Barron is one of the best speakers out there. He's amazing. You guys have to have him. Well, that is social proof. You have now got it from somebody else's mouth that is an expert in the field, not just a celebrity for no particular reason. And they are carrying the weight of your testimonial because it, it, it means that much more. So how does a doctor do this in their own practice? Um, it can be anything because it's all kind of perception of how important this expert is. If you are attending Panky or Dawson or Spear or uh, any of these groups and you can get one of the professors that you worked with uh, or instructors that you worked with or the founder of the program to just write a short little something for you and you use that, that is an expert has now said, I'm worthwhile. Yeah. Even that if is, you don't know who that expert is, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And let's, because we're on the kick of conversion, help us understand like this social proof helps people convert because I think a lot of dentists don't understand the conversion is really what you're doing. Most dentists go, look at all that. Well, if it doesn't convert, what's the point? Right. And so this, what you're talking about are principles of influence that help people take action when it comes to making a phone call, especially to a dental office, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, getting them to the website again or to your social media page is just half the battle. You have got to get them to stick around, like what they see to pick up the phone. So you are influencing someone and, you know, and that influence continues when they come into your office. We're not just talking about lead generation. We're talking about case conversion. You can do the same thing when you have a testimonial album that you show people cases that you're saying, here is an implant case that I did or a cosmetic case that I did. You can trust that I'm going to be capable of doing this. Um, oh, another great way to use this. If you have a patient on the phone and they're just sort of in that shopper mode where they're questioning, ask them, say, hey, are you in front of your computer? Do me a favor. Let's go to our website and I want you to go to this smile gallery page and I want to show you this case and this testimonial of someone who's been through the same kind of thing you're asking about. So that conversion doesn't just have to be on the patient's terms. You can help influence that in your interactions with them. Yeah, I love that one. And I've had so many team members when they ask that question, you got to remember people are calling to make an appointment. So they'll say, are you in front of your computer? And I hear 80% of prospective patients say, yes, I'm right in front of my computer or I'm close to my phone. What should I take a look at? And you're adding visual social proof. Love it. All right. So what about your logo? Believe it or not, tying your brand to these testimonials or to these videos increases the impact and the reliability of it. People remember a testimonial that they read better if your logo is associated with it. So let's say someone's writing a testimonial about how great it is to work with Actemo. If you have a little logo that says, you know, another testimonial from a happy Act Dental client, and that is tied literally to the testimonial that's right there, they're going to remember it more and subliminally it's going to have more impact for them. That is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. It's almost like part of a series, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That is, and as a dental office, you could easily do this too. You know, another satisfied customer. You see that in big brands, another satisfied customer from whatever Toyota or whatever. So, so speaking of <clears throat> another satisfied customer, um, using data and numbers to back things up really matters. So, let me ask you there is an infamous hamburger joint that kind of was one of the original users of social proof. Think about how they used it. Okay. McDonald's. Yeah. Used to have on all of their signs, <clears throat> like one billion burgers served. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is social proof because now that many people have already endorsed you and that number can be incredibly powerful. Um, so don't be afraid to use numbers tied to that. 
if you're trying to get more implant cases and you can say over 500 implant, implant cases have been um, placed by Dr. Winans, I trust you. You're an expert. I am not a guinea pig in your hands. That is so true. And it's not hard to do. You can pull up your um, your your ADA um, numbers and kind of see what procedures been done and easily get a count of how many crowns you've placed, um, how many whitenings you've done, how many anything just gives it that much more context. People want to know um, that someone else, that that many more people have done it before them. No one wants to be the guinea pig. Right. And I've even had team members do that with data when it comes to CE. They'll say our doctor takes 200 hours per year where it's 10 times, you know, whatever, or five times what's required in our state. So as you can see, our doctor is very committed to being the best she can be type of a thing. So people love data. I love data too. And those numbers should be featured like really big and prominently, big call outs graphically to, to attract somebody's attention. Right. Because when they're on your website, again, they're not reading unless we suck them into a great story. They're skimming. They're looking for that one big thing that's going to pop out and grab their attention. So put those right on the home page or a landing page if you're doing AdWords um, and just make that number really easy for them to grab and thus trust. I love this. You're giving me quite the treatment plan here. So how else can we use <laughs> the, the uh, social proof? Uh, trust icons. You know what a trust icon is? No, tell me. Oh, is it like uh, for 25 years ranked or, or like on the side of the Delta plane, best 100 companies to work for, you know, like they have like nine of them on the side of the plane before you get in the plane and you think, well, this plane's not going to crash. I'll get on this one. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what they are. You see them on a lot of websites now where they kind of have like a bar at the bottom of the website. And even if the logos are sort of grayed out along the bottom, you'll see like the Better Business Bureau icon. Um, you'll see dental schools. You'll see a dental society that they belong to. Yeah. One of my favorites that is, is such a, a great example of sort of, I hate to say manipulating the social conscience, but all of those top dentist magazines that come out, those are paid profiles 99 times out of 100. I know because I bought them for people. Mm -hmm. And you're putting your face in there and your own bio in there. But when you can say to your patients, put up a logo featured in Baltimore's top dentist for the past 10 years, and you've got that top dentist logo, which they'll give you the logo for all of these opportunities that you buy, Mm -hmm. idiot trust. Now yeah. I have a big corporation that's um, basically said I'm worthwhile. Oh yeah. I have a Brett Favre nose trimmer and in the corner it says as seen on TV. Well, I've never seen it on TV, but I'm sure it was somewhere like on local to, but people do see in the top dentist thing. Everybody knows now that that's pay to play, but patients don't. And you see it all over social media. We've been ranked as Charlotte's top, one of Charlotte's top. Well, there's 900 of other top dentists you know, in, in these markets. So it works. Don't get me wrong. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm actually a big fan of it, but people have to understand that that is very much, it's very much paid and sponsored, right? Uh, a lot of them are. Yes. I mean, if you have legitimate ones, absolutely um, put them up there. Not that the, the paid ones aren't legitimate, but you, my point is you can use those trust icons with things that you're not even thinking of. So again, using your dental school's logo, um, it, a, a, you know, if you're a member of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, even if you're just a member of these things, there is that implied trust. So I'd love for the audience to make a list of all of these types of associations that they are tied to, get a hold of their logos and get them put on their website, and you're going to start to watch your conversion go up. Yeah. It's just very subliminal, but it's amazing how well it works. Right. Even us in the dental trade, when we look at a bio, we're looking at what they've done in the past, you know, and what organizations they're part of. Love it. Love the trust icons. What else can we okay. use as social proof? Um, last big one. And there's, you know, there's a million different ways to use all of this. I love case studies. Case studies is kind of another way of doing storytelling, but you're pulling out the nuggets that are most important for someone. So if I'm going to trust you with a big procedure, if I'm handing over $40,000 for a full smile makeover or implant retained dentures or something, I want to see a case that you have done with somebody else. And these don't have to be big and complicated. Um, they can just be, you know, kind of, they're, they're a little bit testimonial, a little bit of that, uh, those 
that data, those numbers. Um, you're using the photography to show off the before and after of what you've done, but it's a nice compact story for someone. And when they can download a case study, it kind of has this perceived value of trust. Those are great to use. Um, like if you're doing an AdWords campaign and you're trying to just create a lot of leads at the top of the funnel for implants or cosmetics or some bigger ticket uh, procedure that's fee for service, let people download something before they get to the point of saying, I'm ready to just pick up the phone and call. You want to give them one other step in between to build that trust. Right. Something simple, easily consumed, fast. Um, and would you do them just in a one page type thing? What, what's your suggestion in that? Um, one to two pages at best for a case study. I mean, they're digital. Most people aren't necessarily going to print them out. But all of these types of things, you want to make sure they're gated, which means they got to cough up their, uh, their name and their email and their phone number so that your team can reach out to them. And if they get those kind of leads, uh, by the way, I really believe it's powerful to call those patients and you're not going right into that direct sales pitch. You're simply saying, I saw that you downloaded our case study. I want to see if you have any questions. It is very non-committal. Um, it's just more about I'm here to help you than it is I'm trying to sell you. Love so again, it. that's going to create more trust and more proof. Love it. Love it. Any last things that you would say about social proof, where it's headed? Because this isn't going away. No. Well, the one thing I will say is if you haven't jumped on the social proof wagon or you haven't maximized it, do it now. Because like everything that's out there, um, eventually it becomes overused and it loses its effectiveness. Right. But I promise most of the doctors out there are not doing a tenth of the things that you and I just went over. So if you can jump on it and you know, revamp your marketing to really maximize the social proof, you're going to be really far ahead of your competition. Yeah. And I totally agree. And Tony Goswell just typed in, this is gold. It <laughs> is gold, guys. I'm just telling you the marketing X-Files, this woman knows the secrets that a lot don't. And like she just said, you know, you don't have to do everything, but do something and get going on this path. And you're going to see it absolutely works. Absolutely works. So Zanya, I am so crazy grateful. Now, I know people that are listening to this are going to want more information from you. How do I find you? If I can't do this myself, can you help me with a plan for this for my practice? I'm too busy doing dentistry. How can I get a hold of you? Uh, yes. First of all, absolutely. We love doing plans for doctors, kind of taking that, that full look at everything that they're doing. Uh, the first place to start is to go to our website, just goldenproportions.com. But um, one step that's a, kind of a nice quick thing that everybody can do, go to the resources tab on our page and you're going to see the conversion scorecard because social proof is just one little taste of what you can do to get people to convert on your website. It's a totally free quiz. Um, just answer the questions. There's about 15 questions on there and it's going to give you a score and tell you how well your website is doing at potentially converting people. I'd also say go back and listen to our episode. I think it was episode 190 from about a week ago where we talked about the five fast things you can do to improve the conversion on your website. That one was fabulous. You have to watch that one. Well, watch them all from Zanya. So absolutely. Zanya, I am so grateful. I can't wait for number two, episode number two, which will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. So thank you so much for today. Uh, stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. So thank you guys for watching uh, the Best Practices Show and the Marketing X-Files with Zani. If you enjoyed today, which I know you did, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share with your friends, pass it along to your teammates, you know, Get your team involved in this whole thing. Um, keep sending us suggestions for shows. Give us some tough questions that you have in marketing, and I'll dish them to Zanya, and we'll shoot a whole show on them and bring you some high-quality stuff. So um, I guess until we see you next time, keep watching the Best Practices Show. You guys have a great rest of your day.